gout, high blood pressure, arthritis, fatty liver disease, spinal stenosis, and type 2 diabetes. It's all over, right? Not quite. Today, I'm talking to Bob. He used to suffer from all of the conditions that I just mentioned. That was a year ago, and we're going to find out how he's going today. Just before we get started, do me a massive favor, smash the like button and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and I'm grateful for your support. Let's meet Bob. You've been on the carnivore diet for um, about a year now, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. I'm actually 15 days shy of my year mark right now, as of nice. this recording. How have things changed for you in the almost year that you've done it? And, and how did you find the carnivore diet in the first place? What led you to it? Okay, well, to, to talk about how I found the carnivore diet and where I was at when I found the carnivore diet, we have to start all the way back in 1983 when I was discharged from the army because I had gout. Um, the, of course, the army doctor gave me a handout that told me how to deal with gout because gout is obviously a lifelong problem that's just going to get worse and worse and worse as you get older. And of course it was the standard, basically standard Western diet, eat lots of fruit and grains, whole grains, if you're going to eat meat, never, ever eat red meat, have you know a palm sized piece of chicken or pork or fish once or twice a week. And that's all. Um, and I believed his advice because when I found a non-service doctor, when I got, when they finished discharging me, he gave me basically the same advice. So I continued on following their advice and you know, in doing a few of these interviews, I had somebody jump in one time into the comments and like, didn't they ever tell you about this drug or that drug? Trust me, I took them all. I have ta I took all the drugs. I did everything the doctor said to do. But every time I tried to get any kind of an exercise program going for myself, I would have a gout attack and that would set me back by a week or two or three. So over the course of the next 30 years, I just slowly packed on the weight and got less and less active, more and more sick. And I didn't have time to investigate anything else because I was, you know, busy living my life, going to work, coming home, eating, trying to follow the gout diet as best I could. And to give some perspective on the gout diet, if you were to go to Dr. Google today and type in gout diet, the first two or three pages of things that would pop up would be the exact same crap I was given back in 1983. The recommendations have not changed at all. So following my doctor's advice and taking all the drugs and doing all the diets, all that led me to was about 28 years later, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So I'm like, well, gosh, what do I do with this? Um, and the doctor gave me, of course, more prescriptions. My blood pressure started to go up. So I got more prescriptions and he kept giving me, um, you know, the same basic advice on what to eat. And I, of course, was busy living my life. So I didn't question it. I just kept eating the things and figured, well, this is just the way things are. I'm going to slowly, and I'm going to slowly gain weight and get sicker until one day I pass away. And then all following those instructions did for me was about five and a half years ago, led me to a triple bypass surgery. And when I got out of the hospital for that, they sent me to a thing called cardiac rehab, which is basically where they teach you what to eat and how to eat, plus how to do some exercises. Well, their idea of what to eat was exactly the same as what I had been eating all along. Um, and of course, doing their exercises side, same as always, I would start, do a little bit. And then after a few days, I, I would have a gout flare up and, and everything uh, would, would just explode and get worse. So I had pretty much resigned. When I came home from the hospital from my triple bypass surgery, I had uh, 
pretty much given up. I was very surprised I lived the next day, pretty much every day for the next four years. Um, I decided that since I was probably going to go very, very soon, I went last winter down to North Carolina to a friend of mine's church, and I literally camped in their parking lot with my truck and trailer for the entire winter. And again, I tried to do some exercises and all sorts of other things, but it didn't help. But I felt like my faith got stronger living right there at the church, so I was basically ready to go. Um, then about five days before, I was due to come home via my sister's house. I was going to go to Ohio, visit with her and mom, and then head on back to Nebraska. About five days before that, I was sitting there, and I have always been a um, travel and tourism, photography, van life, camping kind of a consumer on YouTube. So how it popped up on my screen, I have no idea, but I loaded up YouTube, and right in the middle of my homepage was a diet by Dante Ferrigno. His channel is called Ferrigno's Freedom. Um, and the title of the video was 125 Days on the Lion Diet. Lion Diet. I'm like, well, I don't know what the heck the lion diet is, but his before and after picture looks really good. So I'm going to click in there and see what that's all about. So I clicked into it and uh, it didn't take me very long to realize, oh, this is just an extreme version of keto. And I can't do keto because I can't eat meat. I have gout. Um, but he had mentioned to Dr. Barry in his video. I'm like, Dr. Barry, who the heck is that? So I searched for him on the interwebs and found Dr. Barry and discovered he was going live that night. I thought, well, I'm going to go watch his live and maybe get a question answered. Of course, I got there. 15, 20 minutes early, and there were already like 2,000 people in there. And I'm like, oh, I'm never going to get a question answered here. It's just not going to happen. But I dutifully, because that's why I was there, typed in my question. Hi, I have gout, so I can't eat a lot of meat. Is there some version of this diet that I can do with gout? And um if I had known it was going to be this successful, I would have written down who it was because, you know, he has moderators in his chat that are all very well informed on everything. And one of his moderators sent me a message back that said, Bob, gout does not is not caused by eating meat. Here's the link to one of Dr. Barry's videos on gout. And I'm like, what? Of course, meat causes gout. That's what I've known as fact for the last 40 years. But I decided to go watch the video. And so I didn't even stick around for the live chat. I went right over to his channel and started watching the gout diet and his, his gout video. And then I noticed he had another one. And over the course of those two videos, he turned everything I knew as fact on its head. Things I had known as fact for 40 years. I mean, it's just the way things are. And I thought, well, you know, I feel like I'm going to die pretty much every day. So I've got nothing to lose at this point. So I'm going to give it a try. But I was getting ready to travel home and I was going to stop at my sister's house for a week. And I didn't figure it was it was fair to call my sister up and say, hey, I'm changing my diet. So you have to feed me steak every day when I'm there. That didn't seem like a good plan to me. So I was traveling. And after all that was done, I had planned. I knew I was going to be traveling home on May the 8th. So on May the 9th is when I planned to start the day before my 59th birthday. So I got home on May the 8th. I went grocery shopping. I threw everything away in the house, as Dr. Barry had suggested. I threw everything away that did not fit the plan and loaded up on carnivore foods. And the morning of May the 9th, I just started. And, you know, if I had known it was going to be this successful, I would have stepped on the scale before I started. But having, being my age of almost 60 and being so sick for so long, I knew there was no way I was ever going to be able to lose weight. That was just a fact of life. All I was hoping for was that it would make me feel a little better 
and it would help my arthritis pain, which is really what I was looking for. Because when I started, I could barely stand for two to two and a half minutes at a time. Um, and the results have just been phenomenal. I mean, starting at the top of the list, of course, my arthritis pain is 95% better. My spinal stenosis is 95% better. Um, my type 2 diabetes is gone. My fatty liver disease is gone. My stage 1 chronic kidney disease is gone. And, in, you know, I was originally hoping to be able to stand for more than two to two and a half minutes without severe pain. And about three weeks before I came home from North Carolina this year, I did a 15 mile trail hike with a 20 pound backpack. So how has my life changed since then? That's how my life has changed. In fact, I just, I just put up a video today talking about, and I showed, I actually went out and cut my own grass here at the house today. Yes, I'd say my life has changed a little bit, but it's not just the physical stuff, it's the mental stuff. I was having a discussion with a friend of mine. He owns a miniature golf course, and I've worked for him off and on for 34 years. And uh, he's like, you know, you've been out here every summer since your heart surgery. And I was always, you know, prepared to have to come to work because you had passed before it came time for your shift. And we were just talking on the phone. That's three or four days ago now. And he's like, you're just a completely different person. I mean, your mental attitude, you're bright, you're cheerful, you have tons of energy. I can't wait to see where this summer takes us. So I would say the car that carnivore has not just changed my life physically, it has changed my life mentally enough that my friends are noticing it. Yeah, that's uh, that. It, it's something that people can't uh can't turn away from you know they can all say oh well i've heard that uh you know red meat causes diabetes or red meat causes cancer or this that the other but they can't deny the results that they can see in front of them you know oh absolutely and, and i get it from you know several of my friends you know they said oh well eating eating all that red meat's bad for you I said, well, you know, I've got my lab work here on the computer and I can pull it up on my phone. Would you like to pull yours up and we can compare numbers? They don't really want any part of that because my, my lab numbers are much better than theirs all the way across the board. Right. Nice. I mean, that's, a, that's an impressive list. I'm just writing those down as you're talking about it. That's an impressive list of things that... You've seen improvements with arthritis gone. Uh, arthritis much better, ninety five percent better. Spinal stenosis ninety five percent better. Type two diabetes gone. Fatty liver disease gone. Kidney uh, chronic kidney disease gone. That is, that's an impressive list. Yeah. Oh, and the thing that caused it all, I have not had a single gout attack since starting this way of eating. So, I guess my doctors were probably wrong when they said that eating red meat aggravates gout because I have not had a single a single gout flare up since I started. Yeah, I, not, I mean, not one. I always think about that because that's the first thing everyone goes to is gout, you know. And I always think, well, maybe red meat, maybe you know, the purines. There, there is something that you know. There's excess purines that call that can contribute to gout but when you're not eating all the other things that contribute to gout of which i understand from listening to gary fetke that fructose is one of the biggest things that contribute to gout um then then the small amount that's coming from the red meat makes no difference at all yes um to um repeat what a mutual friend of ours that we both have talked to online several times now has said gout is an inflammatory disease. Uric acid, which is what they always blame gout on because the, it can form into uric acid crystals, which are these sharp spiky things. 
but if you do not have the inflammatory process going on that causes those things to happen, uric acid is actually the body's number one antioxidant. We need uric acid in our system. And because mine was so high, that's probably why I had not died yet. Because my uric acid was extremely high when they diagnosed me with gout. Um, I don't even want to say how high. It was more than double the normal. But I actually kind of think it was a blessing in disguise at this point. Well, you know, it uh, it certainly pointed you in the right direction, right? It's <laughs> and it 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 did, and you know, I'm still just an old retired truck driver, but I have learned so much in the last year because I have not. I did that those five days before I left the church and started traveling home. I basically spent every waking hour watching Dr. Barry videos and. Professor K videos to try and get a handle on this thing I was about to do. And since then, I have watched who I consider all of the experts are, plus a few of them that are very inspirational. Like, you know, I hate to plug other people's channels here, but if you're not watching Kelly Hogan, you're missing out on some fantastic inspiration. And I have watched it all, and I have no degree in nutrition. I have no illusions that I can stand toe to toe with Professor K on intellect or knowledge, but I'd be willing to bet that I have more knowledge than 95% of the doctors out there in this country. And from what I've seen them spouting online, I probably know more than 99% of the nutritionists and dietitians out there about how to actually stay healthy. I feel there's also been a change in doctoring. So I guess you and I are about 10 years apart in age, right? Is that right? Yeah, I turned 60 in 15 days. Okay. So um, I remember as a kid, when you went to the doctor, and I'm speaking about Australia, but when you went to the doctor, the doctor was actually interested in what was going on. And the doctor actually wanted to try and find out what was wrong and run tests and ask questions and understand your situation. But somewhere along the line, that changed. And it became, it turned into just a business. Is that Absolutely. your experience? Yeah. I mean, because I can go back to that first doctor not the, the one from the army, but the first civilian doctor that I got when I was discharged, he had said, because he offered me gout drugs at that, at that time, but he said, if you start on these gout drugs, you'll be taking them for the rest of your life. I would prefer you try to stick to the gout diet first and see if that makes enough of a difference for you. And of course, that's, that's the route I chose. Of course, it didn't make the difference because the gout diet has no chance of actually helping your gout. Um, but he was interested enough to not have me taking drugs. And now it seems like every doctor you go to, they have their checklist of symptoms. And when you've checked all the right boxes, they hand you a prescription. And when you've checked all the boxes on the next page, they hand you another prescription and so on and so on and so on. Even my cardiologist, after my, uh, after my heart surgery, other than the, the limited nutritional advice I got in the, uh, in the hospital plus in the cardiac rehab, when I went to see him for my first follow-up, he's like, okay, everything looks pretty good. They did a good job on your surgery. Um, just keep following their instructions and I will see you back here every three months till one of us dies. <gasps> and, and that's, that's just wow. the way medicine is practiced. Now, mm. since that time come to find out he's actually, while he does not do keto himself, he understands keto and supports his patients who do keto. Mm. Um, 
he keeps saying that he's going to get on it because he's a really big guy, but uh, he never does. I think, I think he likes his wife's cooking a bit too much. It's hard to, uh, even if you, even if you're determined to get on keto, it's when, when you're, uh, when you're married, it's, it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of negotiation and work and stuff just to extricate yourself from being able to like having to eat the same things at the same time as someone else, you know, as your partner. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, I can't speak to that. I've never been married. Yeah. So that was one of, that was one of the biggest challenges for me. The, the actually the biggest challenge was convincing my boss and everyone I worked with to stop, uh, stop, almost demanding that they gave me food but uh you know that then uh then my wife was second um all right so right now um have you been able to you said most of the um most of the problems that you had are gone have you been able to give up most of your medications or all of your medications oh that's an excellent question that's the thing that i forgot to mention in my uh in my earlier speech, when I started the carnivore diet, I was taking 13 pills in the morning and nine pills in the evening, plus pain pills. And I was on the maximum dosage of Lyrica three times a day. Plus, I had a great big bottle of tramadol for when the Lyrica did not keep up. So I was taking pretty much the maximum dosage of Lyrica and the maximum dosage of tramadol plus 13 pills in the morning and nine at night. Now I take one pill a day and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get rid of that one very, very soon. That one pill a day I take is the blood thinner that my cardiologist put me on. I saw him last fall before I left for the winter and I asked him about that because all my other meds were gone by that point. But when I left for the year, I was only down about 80 pounds. So he said, well, you're doing really good, but go ahead and take the, the blood thinner over this winter. And when I see you again in the spring, I'll run some more tests and we will revisit getting you off the blood thinners at that time. Mm. And I have to look at my calendar. I think my appointment for him is next week. Um, so hopefully I get off that blood thinner, um, nice. very, very soon. And that's nice. the only pill I take. Nice. And so your blood pressures, your blood pressure is all good now too. Yeah, I was taking, I'm going to, while I tell you the first part of this story, I'm going to go ahead and run a blood pressure on my watch here so that I can tell you what it is right now. But Oh, nice. <laughs> right here, I was, I, I was taking three different blood pressure medicines. And even on three meds, it was averaging about 144 to 150 over 90 to 100, somewhere in that range. Um, so it was still not what I would call well controlled, even with three blood pressure medicines. And wow. there it is. I'm currently sitting at 112 over 68 oh, on nice. no blood pressure medicines. Nice. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. It, it's just, you know, it, it just amazes me that this is a change that you can make over a period of less than a year. Yeah, it, you know? it is. It's, you know, if, if I had, I, I often wonder, I try not to dwell in the past, but I often wonder what would my life have been like if I had known how wrong the doctors and the science pertaining to gout was. I may mean, not have actually had to have been discharged from the army or even later than that, just, you know, if I had known about this 25 years ago, how different would my life have been not, not having to deal with slowly getting crippled. But I try not to do well on that because I have always said the sum of our choices and all of our life experiences build to make who we are today. And 
I actually kind of like who I am today. I've, you know, got this little YouTube channel and all I do is turn on the camera and talk to people while I take my walks outside. And there's quite a few people that seem to enjoy it. Um, and if, if I end up helping some people along the way, that's bonus. I, I literally just started to, as a way to keep my family informed on what was going on in my life. And everybody else started to, to tune in. And it's, it's, it's been an amazing ride. But I just, I try not to dwell on the past. I try to stay in the moment, in the current, because what's done is done. There's nothing we can do about it yeah. now. So now we should just try to make the best of whatever time we have left and be the most positive person we can, and hopefully leaving things a little better than when we found them. Yeah. I, I, I like the way you kind of look at it, like the, the sum of all our experiences makes who we are. I think it's really important to kind of think, you know, it's easy to fall into a trap of always thinking, oh, if this hadn't happened, if this hadn't happened. But, you know, actually when I look at it, in my life as well, the, there's a lot of bad things that happen to you over time, but I'm not sure I'd want to change anything because it makes you who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. Like I said, it's, it's easy to dwell in the past and it's, it's very easy to look back and think about what might have been, but I try not to do that very often because I can't, I can't imagine, I mean, I can't imagine, but I can't really imagine that life can be much better than what it is for me right now. Mm. And, you know, and the fact that you're every day now, you're able to get out there, go hiking, do what you want is just amazing, right? Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I went over to the, I went over to the YMCA two days ago. Because when I'm traveling, I keep a um, Planet Fitness gym membership because the Planet Fitness black card lets you get into any of the gyms anywhere in the country. So as I'm traveling, if I decide I need a shower, because I don't have a shower in my camper, I just pull into a Planet Fitness, pull up the app on my phone, scan myself in, and I go take a shower. Um, while I'm home, I switched back over to a YMCA membership because the YMCA has a swimming pool and I like walking in the swimming pool. I used to like it primarily because when you get into the water, it takes all that pressure off your joints. So while I was just even not doing much walking, but just sort of standing around in the swimming pool, that was the best part of my day. That was the best I ever felt because all the pressure was off my joints and now that first walk, the first couple of walks, I've been over there twice, the first couple of walks, I've been getting after it. Walking through chest deep water is a really tough workout. You get, because, you know, I'm used to, when I walk, even when I'm hiking with my backpack, I'll be out there on trail for three, four, sometimes even five hours. And just pushing as hard as I can at the Y for a half hour in the pool. And I'm pretty much done. But it was very interesting. I was over there yesterday morning. I ended up not working out yesterday morning because back in the day when I was going over to the Y, first thing Sunday morning, it was just me and the lifeguard. We were the only two people in the building for the first hour to an hour and a half. I'm not sure what was going on, but I got over there and decided not to even try because there were, you know, 30 or 40 kids already in the pool plus their parents and some other people. I mean, there were probably 45 or 50 people in the swimming pool right when they opened at 10 o'clock. And that makes it very hard to get anything done. Um, but I was standing around the front desk and the gal there is like, you look familiar to me, but I don't know who you are. And I said, well, I used to come in here every Sunday and I'm going to start coming in here every Sunday again. And she's like, you can't be Bob. I said, yep, yep, I'm Bob. And she pulled up my account, which still had my 
my old account, which still had my picture on it from then. And she's like, Oh my God, did you do that on purpose or are you sick? <laughs> like, oh no, no, I did that on purpose. And then I bumped into uh, Justin, who is the personal trainer that works there on Sundays. And he had been gone and come back, but he was there when I was there before. And he's like, man, I can't believe this. I said, well, you know, I get two free personal training sessions with my, uh, with my renewed membership. And he's like, yes, you do. Just make an appointment. We'll get after it. I said, well, before I do that, um, I said, what are your thoughts on cardio and zone two training? And he's like, that's the dumbest thing in the history of the world. And I'm like, I found a guy who, at least if he doesn't know who Bart K is, will get the seal of approval from Professor K. So I can work with this guy. So I've signed up for two sessions for the next couple of weeks just to, to come up with a plan to actually do some, some weightlifting over at the Y as well. Mm-hmm. And now I've completely thought what the, forgotten what the original question was. I'm sorry. I got off on this tangent. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, to be honest, I think I've uh, <laughs> it slipped my mind. <laughs> that, that, um, oh, it wasn't a question. It was more of a statement. We were just talking about, you know, how things have changed. Oh, um, yeah. 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 So um, one thing that we haven't talked about yet that I do want to touch on, because, sure. you know, this is a primary thing for everyone, is weight. So what is the differential between now and when you first started, like almost a year ago? Oh, my weight? Yeah. Or you mean my fat? My gravity exerted on the scale. Yeah, your gravity exerted on the scale, yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I'm two pounds. I'm hoping for that last two pounds in the next 15 days so that I can say I've lost 150 pounds in the year. Wow. And I actually think it's already more than that because – as I said, I did not really, I was convinced there was no way I was going to lose weight. That's not why I started the diet. I started the diet in hopes of feeling better so that I didn't spend my last few weeks on earth in agonizing pain. I was hoping for a little bit of pain relief. Um, but I was still, you know, when I started, I was still convinced that I'm going to do this for a few weeks. And then one morning, I'm just not going to wake up. But if I can have a little bit less pain, that would be good. So I did not step on the scale for the first two weeks. So when I stepped on the scale, because after the first two weeks, I noticed that my hands didn't hurt nearly as much as they used to. It's like, hey, I think I think this is actually helping my arthritis. And then as I'm sitting there, I noticed that my pants were a little looser than they'd been. It's like, you know, I, I should probably go step on the scale. So at that time, two weeks into it, is I weighed 315. And since that's the first time I stepped on the scale since starting this diet, I have to say that I started at 315, which right now puts me at 148 pounds down. I, if I never lose another pound, I'll be happy, but I think I still have 15 or 20 to lose. And I'd like to get the, the last two off to be 150 purely from a, I'm a YouTuber at heart standpoint because a thumbnail that says how I lost 150 pounds in a year just sounds much cleaner and nicer than how I lost 148 pounds in a year. True, true, true. Um, Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's so you said, so when did you say May? What was it? May 9th is the day I started. May 9th. And May 9th. So May 9th will be my one year car anniversary. And then May 10th will be my 60th birthday. I mean, we are just shy of a year, you know, uh, uh, well, yeah, just about a month apart in the time we've been mm-hmm. doing this, right? Um, and a year ago, I mean, I'd heard about the carnivore diet on Twitter, or I'd heard about carnivore here, there, and um, I think I'd seen part of that original Joe Rogan video where he talked about going on the carnivore diet and the the uh, bathroom issues he was having. Um, but uh, I I hadn't really paid attention to it that much. But it seems 
in the last year, there's just the, the amount of people that are hearing about this diet is, it's just massive. It's just, it's growing so fast. What do you think about that? I think it is growing very fast because prior to seeing Dante's video, I had never heard of carnivore diet or the lion diet because the only time I have actual TV service is during football season, American football season, because I watch college sports. Um, primarily I watch the Ohio state university Buckeyes. Um, but so I don't, other than during football season, I don't watch regular TV. And as I said, I, you know, travel and tourism, photography, um, camping, van life, that kind of stuff is what I always watched on YouTube. And my guilty pleasure of watching America's Got Talent, and Britain's Got Talent. I, I love those shows for some reason. But so for whatever reason, the advertising even on YouTube had never shown me any of this stuff um, until I found Dante's video. I didn't even know who Joe Rogan was. That's how, you know, non TV watching I was. But in, even when I started a year ago, I had to, you know, I did the search for Dr. Barry and then I did the search for carnivore. And I found, you know, Dr. Baker and Dr. Chafee and Jason Fung and Dr. Westman and all the guys and the gals. But I've just noticed in the last four or five months, there's a new carnivore channel popping up pretty much every day. Um, I think a lot of it is people trying to cash in on it. But there are so many people now. When I first started, I had told my friends, because I get together with a group of friends the third Sunday of every month, and we play board games. Um, spend the day playing board games, and we always, everybody brought some food to eat. And we shared it out. We all had a great big feast that day. Um, well, I let them know that I've started this new diet. And because I just started two weeks ago, I'm not willing to have a cheat day yet. So I'm not going to be joining you for your feast, but I'm happy to come over and bring some hamburger patties for myself and play games with you. And none of them had ever really heard of it except one gal had done paleo herself and got some improvement from it, but then fell off the wagon because she's, you know, a wife with four kids and leading a busy life and all that. She just, she didn't have the time for it. And now I think everybody has heard of either paleo or keto or carnivore. And there's even because of um, Jordan and Michaela Peterson, there's a lot of people out there that have heard about the lion diet even. And I think it has just exploded um, in the last year. And I think it's pretty exciting. I think we're actually winning because a year ago, there weren't very many people from the other side of the aisle coming to carnivore channels, making stupid comments. And now, not only are they coming to everybody's channel to leave stupid comments, except on mine because I have my blocked words list so tight that very rarely do one of those comments get through to where everybody can see them. Um, but people have actually started making videos attacking people like Dr. Barry and um, Professor K and, and I couldn't believe it the other day. I saw one where somebody was attacking Dr. Kiltz, saying, like, why is this guy talking about nutrition? He might be an okay fertility doctor, but, and I felt like reaching through the screen and choking this guy, and like, Dr. Kiltz is not an okay fertility doctor. He's been one of the leaders in the fertility field for 30 plus years, trying to get in to see him as a female with fertility issues is darn near impossible because he's so busy, even at I believe he's 68 or 69 years old now. And he's still that busy because he is 
one of the very best in his field. And I'm like, how dare you attack Dr. Kills? Not only is he great at what he does, he's a supremely nice guy. And I think that's why, you know, you can tell we're winning because a year ago, they're like, ah, it's just another kook fringe group. They'll pass. Everybody just keep doing your, your, um, your, your veggie stuff. And now they're going out of their way to try to attack us because we are winning. Because, you know, how many success stories can they point to of people that have gotten rid of all of the things that somebody like me has gotten rid of and lost all that weight in a year? And my only supplement really in that year has been salt. I have always said on my channel, my primary supplement is beef. And I, and I supplement with as much salt as I can stand to take because those are the two most important things in my diet. So yeah, it's, it has really exploded in the last year. So uh, yeah, uh, you make a really good point about how, you know, they're, going from uh, just ignoring this community to attacking the community is, you know, uh, a good sign that it's growing and it's having influence. Um, yeah. And I, I've noticed, <laughs> I actually noticed this morning, um, there's a, there's a, a recent interview on a different channel with a nutritionist where she recommends um, uh, eating cereal women eat cereal so they get iron and um like there's a lot I know of which people, video you're talking about yeah. i saw that That's there, there's a lot of people commenting on that video now now that they've noticed how ridiculous that comment is there's a lot of people commenting and saying this is this is crazy how can she recommend breakfast cereal blah 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 and someone replied obviously someone who's very uh, you know uh pro plant-based replied to one of those comments on the channel today and said something like um well who are you gonna listen to? Um Chafee, Berry, and Bart K, they're all quacks. And it's like <laughs> but quacks. The people like the salad and seed oils are not going to not gonna solve your arthritis and gout problems and stuff like that. You know, cereal is not gonna solve these problems, it's gonna make it worse. But they just yeah. they just want to dig in. Is this the same gal I'm thinking of? Is she the one that said it's perfectly natural to go poo three times a day? May yeah, I think that is her. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> I'm like, wow, three times a day. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be able to sit down after that. But um <laughs> so <laughs> I would, so, I would need I would I would need to start buying chocolate ice cream again not to eat but to take a scoop of it and and you know cool things off down there. <laughs> so what what is your what what is your a uh, regular day of eating like for you now um well I can tell you like just today I have already eaten because I usually eat about five but I I wanted to make sure I was done eating before you and I got together. So I ate a little early today um, because I had cooked a, uh, a 10 pound standing rib roast on Sunday. I still had some two inch thick ribeye steaks in the fridge and pre because I cooked it medium rare so that I could then throw it in the cast iron and scorch it up on both sides and still have a medium to medium rare steak on the inside. Um, I weighed the one out today just because I was curious how big I'd cut them. And it was just a little bit under two pounds. So I had a just under two pound ribeye and I knew that wasn't going to quite be enough. So I had just under two pound ribeye and five fried eggs. And that's what I ate. And that's, that's the whole, that's everything I've eaten today and everything I'm going to eat today. Um, yesterday is sort of a joke. I don't know if you've been, if you follow very many other YouTube channels, but for some reason, it seems like smash burgers have been the trend 
on a lot of people's channels over the last week or so. You know, everybody, everybody was making smash burgers. I mean, they just, they were showing you, this is how I make my smash burgers. And I mean, it was all over the people that I follow. So I thought, well, okay, I'm going to make a smash burger Bob style. So I got out two pounds of ground beef, thawed it out and smashed it down in so that it filled, it literally filled my um, 12 and a half inch cast iron skillet. So I made one big smash burger. I made, I made one two pound hamburger right. in my cast iron skillet. And I actually managed to get it flipped without breaking it. It did break apart a little bit as I was getting it out of the skillet to put on my cutting board, but it came together well enough so that after I poured the grease over it and took a picture of it, which you'll find on a few places, I actually, you know, there's a big two pound burger and I call it the smash burger Bob style. <laughs> nice. Because I've known people that follow me know that I eat a lot, even for a even for a carnivore, I eat a lot. I average between two and two and a half pounds of meat a day. And if the meat is small, like it's only a pound and three quarters to two pounds, I generally will have anywhere from five to eight eggs with that. And sometimes I'll cut up butter to put on top of it to add some fat. Um, I have recently discovered lard again. I love cooking in lard, which helps up the fat content even more. Technically, that's not lion diet because lard is pork fat, but it's oh so tasty mm. to, to fry eggs in lard. Fried in butter is good, but fried eggs in lard is one step above that. Maybe mm. even two steps. Fantastic. <laughs> No, but that's what that's what I eat today. Once so, once a day, I've been doing one meal a day for about seven months or so. Maybe eight. I can't tell you exactly when I started one meal a day because I originally started at three meals a day and very quickly cut it down to two. And then it was a couple three months into it. Somewhere in there, I just didn't get hungry and I skipped an entire day without even realizing I'd skipped eating that day. So then I'm like, well, my body must think it's time. Let me try this one meal a day thing and see how I feel. And I've never looked back. It just, I feel the best when I eat once a day, a big meal, so that I get all of the good things that come from eating a big meal. As Professor K explains, you don't want to be flat line on your insulin the whole time because that can cause problems you do want to have one large bolus of protein at least once a day so you get that little bit of a bump in your insulin and that keeps everything working properly these people that eat a couple of small meals a day and never actually get uh, any kind of an insulin spike if you're still trying to heal that's not such a bad thing but for the long term that can be very bad for your health. Mm. So I like the one meal a day thing. It makes the most sense for me and how I like to live my life. And there's something satisfying about sitting down and having, you know, a two and a half pound roast on my cutting board. And I know I'm going to smash very close to the whole thing. I love the one meal a day thing. Um, you know, also because I, I kind of look forward to that meal. Like I have my meal at breakfast. I look forward to that, but it's just the time savings and the, and the productivity gains you get from it. You know, mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah. And I mean, it's not just the, the time savings because you're only sitting down to eat once. Grocery shopping is easier. Um, you don't have all that time spent cooking because, you know, ever since I was diagnosed with diabetes 10 and a half, 12 years ago, I don't remember exactly when it was. I've been cooking 95% of my meals at home because it's just easier. Um, so I very rarely eat out. So, you know, planning three meals a day, shopping for three meals a day, cooking three meals a day took up an awful lot of my time, even on those days when I bought one of those cheap, disgusting frozen pizzas that you get at the grocery store for a couple of dollars because it's big and it's cheap. And then you throw a little of your own pepperoni, a little of your own cheese on it. 
and you've got a fairly decent meal for $2 for the pizza at the store plus 75 cents worth of added on ingredients. But there's still, there's a lot of planning and time and effort in all of that. Um, and I have a lot more time for doing whatever I want since I only have to, and I don't even really have to think about it. I mean, if I've got a steak or hamburger thawed out, it goes in the cast iron. If I forgot to get something out, I take a, a frozen steak and throw it in the air fryer for 15 minutes. No thought involved in cooking anymore and no thought mm. involved in shopping. I walk into the store, I go straight to where they keep the eggs, and then I go over to the meat discount section. And if there's nothing worth having in the meat discount section, I back up to the beef section. I'm in and out of the store in 10 minutes. Yeah, it's awesome, right? It is. It's great. Yeah. I had, I don't have to spend any time shopping. I I I think actually I I must have uh, a bit of a reputation at our local supermarket, right? Because there's I I'm there. There's not many foreigners around where I live, and basically, you know, um, if you're a foreigner in Japan, you pretty much stand out because you're taller and you just you're more noticeable. And uh, so I must be like, there must be thinking this guy comes in here every evening about 9.30 at night and buys, you know, two packs of ground beef and two two boxes of eggs and all this kind of thing. He never buys any vegetables. What's going on? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't get my, my butchers never even question me. I asked him to save me out uh, some beef fat. And they're like, well, how much do you want? Because we're trimming the steaks every day back there. I'm like, well, this is five pounds. I think you can do that. And they're like, sure, come back tomorrow. I'll have five pounds of beef, beef fat for you. And I still have two and a half pounds of it in the freezer. And they didn't charge me anything for it. They're just like, here, we were just going to throw this away. I'm like, that's awesome. I like that. Yeah. And, and I don't get any questions because the – I've always gone to the same grocery store. Um, the girl that's always out stocking the shelves when I go by, she kind of saw me and, and did one of those triple takes. Like, is that really Bob? <laughs> and the, the little old lady that, because I go in early in the morning, the little old lady who I forget exactly how old she is. She's somewhere between 80 and 90 years old. I forget exactly how old she is, but she checks. She runs the check stand in the mornings and she doesn't question because you know she's like aren't you going to get anything besides meat today i'm like nope that's all i eat she's like mm -hmm. well it must be working for you because you've lost a ton of weight since last time i saw you yeah and no nice. i like it yeah nice um so Bob, is there is there anything else that you wanted to share while we're together? Anything that you think is important for people to know about carnivore or about your journey in particular? Um, well, the first thing I would say is don't do it the way I did it. I jumped right in. I was standard American diet on May the 8th, and then I was carnivore on May the 9th. And I'm proud to report that I spent my 59th birthday in the bathroom. <laughs> and I spent the next two weeks not traveling very far from my bathroom because doing it the way I did, I don't think it will actually hurt you to, to not have a slow transition. But if you're not going to have a slow transition, those first couple of weeks, you can't get very far from the house or even very far from the bathroom in your house because you will have problems that are urgent, sudden, and explosive. So I highly recommend that you do a slow transition to this diet over the course of six to eight weeks. Um, I don't recommend you do it the way I did it. Um, the next thing that I would like to tell people is I just – talked about this a few days ago, one of the most important vitamins that you have to make sure you're getting enough of when you're on this diet is vitamin P. Vitamin P stands for patience. 
everybody is different. Don't look at me and say, wow, Bob lost 150 pounds in a year. I'm going to jump right into this. And the weight's just going to start falling off. Well, it may or may not. I referenced Kelly Hogan many times. You know, if you look at her story, she spent the first six months gaining weight because her body needed to heal because she was so lacking in essential nutrients to make her body run properly that her body's basically like, oh boy, look at all this stuff. Let's fix stuff because we got stuff to do with now. Um, so she spent the first six months gaining weight. Then after that, the weight just fell off of her and she looks fantastic now. She's not quite our age, but she looks like she's maybe 25 years old. Um, she looks fantastic. So have vitamin P, have patience because we don't get to choose. Well, I'm starting this because I want to get, make my arthritis feel better. Well, if your body decides that you need to lose 20 pounds before your arthritis gets better, that's what it's going to do or vice versa. We have no control over what our body is going to fix first. So have patience and also have confidence that this journey will work for 99.9% .9 of the people out there if you are doing it correctly. And if you're one of the 0.1% that it does not work for, if you're doing it correctly, I recommend you get professional help. Um, you and I both talk to Professor K. He does consulting. And there are many others out there. If Professor K is not your cup of tea, I would get professional advice, but give it time. Give it at least 90 days to see what's going to happen. Um, because the worst thing you can do is try it for 15 to 25 days and say, oh, well, this isn't working at all for me and go back to eating the standard American diet. Because, you know, as I now know from 40 years of getting sicker and sicker and sicker, that the standard American diet is going to do nothing for you except make you sicker and sicker. And I don't care if you're carnivore or keto or ketovore or low carb, or you could even be at the far end of the spectrum and start off with a vegan diet. As long as you understand that the vegan diet is not a long-term sustainable diet, unless you have a pail full of supplements to take with it on a daily basis. I prefer not to take a bucket full of supplements. Um, and I still think supplements are not as bioavailable. So you're going to run into problems down the road, but I don't mind those people because they are at least thinking about nutrition, but whatever, whatever diet you're going to do, my best advice is pick the one that you think you can stick with that has proper nutrition and is within the proper human diet spectrum. Because yes, you and I could probably both stick to the all Oreo and ice cream diet. However, that's not going to be beneficial for us long-term. So when I say pick the diet you can stick with, I'm not talking about the Oreo and ice cream diet. I'm talking about something within the proper human diet spectrum. And just trust that it's going to work. Stick with it. Don't give up. And one of the things that I found have found amazing in this community is the community. All of the carnivores and keto people out there are always happy to talk with you which is unusual for me because I've always been single. I've always been kind of a loner. I mean, I was an over the road truck driver for 25 plus years. I spent a lot of time by myself on the road and that's the way I like it. But having somebody to talk to, even if it's just, man, I'm feeling that pizza urge today. I need to talk. I need somebody to talk me down off the ledge of going to go get a pizza. Finding your community is really important on this journey. Um, and I think that's, that's probably my top pieces of advice for people trying to, to do this way of eating. That's, that, that's really, uh, really good advice. Um, 
Well, um, Bob, if people want to reach out to you, people want to check out your channel, how can they get in contact? It's, it's really easy. And I'm assuming you're going to put that down there on the bottom of the screen somewhere. I'm yeah. at semi-retired Bob. That will find me on YouTube. Semi-retired Bob will find my private Facebook group that you have to fill out a little three-question questionnaire to get in. Um, if you want to send me questions directly, my email is semi-retiredbob at yahoo.com. Um, I have an Instagram that I believe is semi-retired Bob. I don't do much with it. I occasionally post food pictures up there. Um, and I have a Twitter that I'm not even sure. I don't think I log in, but once a week or so. And that is semi underscore Bob. For some reason, it didn't like semi-retired Bob. So, But I'm semi-retired Bob everywhere else. My primary focus is on my YouTube channel. Um, I put out content almost every day. Um, most of those videos are walking and talking, where basically I just go for my daily walk and talk to the camera. I have started doing some interviews, as you well know. I just posted up my first interview, and it was with you, and it's gotten pretty good response, so I'm going to do more. Um, but, yeah, that's where you can find me. No worries. Of course, I'll link to them below. And, um, guys, you really, uh, you really should check out Bob's channel. Really interesting content. And, um, you know, it's great to be able to follow his journey. Bob, thank you very much for sharing with us today. Oh, thanks for having me, Dave. This has been fun. Um, we should do it again sometime. Maybe get yeah. together and have a, uh, uh, a live question and answer session with both of our groups at some point. But That sounds awesome. Yeah, this has been great. Thanks for having me, Dave. I've really enjoyed myself. Guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.